you gotta just build things. Even if it's been done before, just figuring it out will pay dividends in the long run. Let's walk through how to read the temperature and humidity using our ESP32 and a DH22 sensor. Uh, we will read in those values and then display it on our 16x2 LCD display. In a future video, we will send the data over Wi-Fi to a server and display the stats in a web page. And maybe we might go one video further and have our LCD display show the high, low, and average temperatures over a predetermined amount of time. And we can cycle our display by adding a push button showing different stats. All right, getting set up. Uh, we've done this before, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. If you want to get up to speed, I have a couple videos going through all this. First thing we got to do is set up our project. IDF Pi, create project. I'm going to call this temp humidity. And I'm going to go ahead and go into that directory. Now what I'm going to do is set the target for ESP32. All right, once that's done, we're going to need a dependency. And that dependency, I'm using SORXXDHT. So I'm going to go ahead and Go ahead and copy this and paste it right into there. Now I'm going to reconfigure and go ahead and build. All right, that should take about a minute. Looks like it took me 32 seconds. But if you see all of this, it should have went okay and successful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open up our project here. Go to main, we have our temp humidity C file. But first, before we continue, we should go ahead and connect our DH22 to our ESP32. Okay, I'm going to use a breadboard to make this just a little bit easier. Although the ESP32 doesn't fit, we can still use jumper cables from our breadboard to our peripherals. All right, first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the positive and negative from our ESP32 right into the breadboard. So I'm gonna use red for positive and black for negative. All right, quick note here on the breadboards, the positive and negative, they go all the way up and down here. So if we plug in positive here, we can jump from this lane to anywhere in here that we'd want, for instance. And same with the negative. But now all of these ones here are go across. It doesn't connect all the way through because of this gap in between here. All right, so now our positive lane has our positive from our ESP32, and the negative has our, or the ground, has our ground. And here's my DHT22. I'm just going to pop that in somewhere over here, in case you want to know the positive, the data pin, and then the ground. So what we got to do is jump the positive to the positive here, and then we got black for ground, so I'm going to take ground and pop it in the ground. But in between the positive and our data pin, we need a 10K ohm resistor. That keeps it high so that we get good data from our DHT22. So actually, I'm going to unplug these real quick so I can get in there. So from our positive, so in between the power and then this middle one, was our data, sorry if you can't see very well, it's getting kind of messy in there. That one go in like that. And now I'll have, put my positive back and the ground back. So if you can see that, we got the ground, going to the ground, to the ground, to the ground. And from our positive lane, we have a 10 ohm resistor going, gonna go in between the power and the data out. So the data out, I'll put at the end here. Now I'm gonna go into D25. Okay, now we should be ready to start coding up so we can read the center sensor. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to need to include that DHT header file we just brought in. We're going to use a ESP error. We're going to use ESP log. And of course, we need our handy free RTOS, free RTOS header and our free RTOS task dot header. Here we go. 
I think that's all we need for now. So DHT dot H is our new header. So it's going to read our DHT 22 ESP error is for error. Obviously ESP is for logging the free RTOS, the task in this is going to allow us to delay for a few seconds or however long we decide in between readings. Okay. Just like normally we're going to have a const car pointer tag. I'm going to call this temp humid. And then we're going to read in two datas, uh, temperature and humidity. So it's actually an int 16 type. I'm going to call it temp and humid. I'm going to go ahead and log out real quick that we are starting our temp humidity readings. Okay, now we are going to loop uh, forever. So while one, we're going to do DHT read data. Now your sensor type depends on where you got it from. So you need to read your data sheet or wherever you got it from. Mine is this. And then we need a pin, which I didn't put in yet, but I know that's 25. And then we need our humidity. We need the, the address of, and then our temp. So before I go on too long, let me go ahead and define our DHT pin, which was 25 and go ahead and put in DHT pin. Okay. But this actually returns an error. ESP error type. So let's go ahead and check that. ESP error T, call ERR, set that equal to that. And then we need to check if error does not equal ESP OK, that means we had an issue. So we're going to put our tag in here and say uh, error could not read DHT 22 sensor. I should make that a log E else we have good values. So let's go ahead and just let's go ahead and print out our temp. It's going to be percent D. We're getting an int 16. So we're going to have to convert that percent D and this is Celsius. So we're going to go temp divided by hundred and then temp modulus hundred. They'll give us the decimal. And then we're going to do the same thing for humidity. And then we want a percent sign instead of a C for Celsius because it's it's a percentage. All right, we don't want it to spit out over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, we do, but we want to delay it. So V task delay. Let's go five seconds and we need that port tick period milliseconds. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to try to run this. So let's see if everything worked out. All right. So it's IDF pi, our port is dev, TTY USB zero. And we can do build, flash, monitor, all in one go. Well, obviously that is incorrect. It is not one degrees in here. And the humidity is probably 40% or so. So let's go ahead and see what we did wrong here or I did wrong. Maybe you knew it the whole time. Yep. So my mistake, it's 10, <laughs> not a hundred. All right, let's go ahead and do that again. Just so we get, we can see our correct values. Okay. 18.3 and 39.9% humidity. That sounds about right. And it's just dumping it every five seconds. It's not very fun to try to go and look at the logs to see what the temperature and humidity is. It'd be nice to have, I don't know, a display. So let's go ahead and attach our LCD to this. It might get a little bit messy. All right. Since we already have our positive and ground lanes, we can do that pretty quickly, pretty easily. This one's the ground. So I'm going to go white for that. I just like using red for voltage or anything like that. It just makes it easier. And if it all works, yep. It's powered on and we got a bunch of blocks up top. So now I'm going to take the data pin and I'm going to connect that to 21, D21 for digital. Then I'm going to take the clock and go that to D22. Yeah, told you it's going to get a little bit messy, but it's just a prototype. All right, now we have it connected. We need to get our component 
and that is the one we used last time. So I'm going to copy this, paste that in there, and I'm going to go reconfigure again in IDF Pi build one more time. Just want to make sure it's all building correctly and we got everything. All right, that took 32 seconds again. All right, we need to go ahead and include that new header we just got, which is HD44780. Yep, and we need to do some defines this time before I get ahead of myself. We need our LCD adder. That should be OX27. We need our pins, which is SDA. SDA pin, that's 21. Our clock pin is 22. And we're going to define LCD rows is 16. And define LCD calls is 2. Okay, we're going to need a couple strings. I'm going to call this temp str. Initialize it 32 and a humid str, which is also going to be 32. And then we're going to init our LCD with our LCD adder. We are SDA pin, our SCL pin, LCD columns, and LCD rows. And I misspelled in it. Okay, in our while loop, first thing we're going to do is LCD clear screen. Because we're going to loop, so it's going to we're going to end up putting something on the screen. We're going to get the data, put it on the screen, wait five seconds, clear the screen again, so we get the new data and put that on there. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that for now. So we're going to use sprintf on our temp string. We're going to go t for temperature. Do what we did before, percent d, percent d for Celsius. We're going to temp divide 10 and temp modulus 10. We do the same thing with the humid string. All right, we have our strings, but we need to actually put them on the LCD. So that's LCD. CLD, LCD, right string, we're going to do the temp string first. Then we need to set our cursor to 0, 1. This will be the second row. And we're going to write the next string, which is the humid string. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and build, flash, and monitor. Oh, that's right. We had this problem last time because I think it's missing missing a header for some reason. And of course, I can't see it because it's in my git ignore, all these uh, directories here. So that's managed components, yeah. The panagraph, and the include and that header. So I'm just gonna include stdlib.h here. And let's try that again. And if all goes well, there we go. Temperature 18.1. And of course, I've left the T there. And I left the C. That's 40.8%. Uh, so let's fix that at least. Humidity. And then we need to replace that with a percent and add another percent. We could clean this up and add a kind of couple helper functions. We're going to convert the values to a float and then we'll convert our temp from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Let me go back up here and make our function declarations. Convert value, we're gonna take an int 16t, call that val. Then we're gonna have a float convert temp. We're gonna take in int 16t and that's gonna be Celsius. Go ahead and yank those, go to the bottom, paste those in. Okay, these are going to be pretty simple, but we're just going to return val divided by 10.0f. And that should do that. And then, I'm sorry, convert to Fahrenheit is return Celsius times 9.0 divided by 5.0 plus 32. All righty. So let's get our float. I call it Celsius. That is equal to convert value. It's going to be our temp and our float humidity. Convert value, and that's humid. And then finally, we need a Fahrenheit, and that is convert temp Celsius. Now here, we're going to change pretty much all this here. We're going to go percent 0.1 F 
C, put a space, maybe a slash, and percent point one F. F, that's going to be Celsius, and then Fahrenheit. And this one is just going to be humidity. It doesn't like that. We're going to do 0.1 F float also there. All right, so let's try that again. Shouldn't be too much of a change. Actually, it will be because I messed up. There we go. We got 18.4 Celsius. Convert that to 64.4 Fahrenheit and humidity 40.2%. And this is going to be a good spot to stop. We've set up our ESP32 to read our DHT22 and record the temps and display it on our display. In the next video in the series, we'll send the data to a server and display it in a web page and probably store it in an SQLite on the server. Awesome. Way to level up by doing. The code will be hosted on GitLab. Link will be in the description. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment to defeat that algo monster.